Hello, welcome to another one of Studio Central's live Facebook art demos. I think I said that in the wrong order, but that's okay. <laughs> um, we are here as per usual at Upbeat Artworks where we sell the work of all of our Artbeat alumni that have gone through our artist residency program. And then across the way, across the hall, you can come by in person to Studio Central. But for those that can't be here in person right now, this is for you. So before we get into what we're doing today, we're going to read one of our artist bios and show off some of their work. So I will turn the camera around, show you some art, and have Kate read the, the bio. Kevin Bromit. Kevin Bromit was born in Toronto in 1965. He took a variety of courses at the post-secondary level, library technician, IT, BE in psychology, pre-masters in history and realized his interest in art relatively late. Artbeat has allowed me to explore sculpture and pottery and has excited and motivated me to think of myself as an artist, he says. Kevin feels he's working himself up from the level of illustrator, focusing on the technique, to that of an artist who can bring a certain gestalt, or gestalt where emotion, idea, and concept reinforce each other to facilitate multiple interpretation. Simplicity is the most appealing, is most appealing, and allows a sharper focus on emotional expression, he adds. His current work replicates the look and feel of watercolor using Conte, chalk pastel, or paper. And one of these pieces is not here. Um, so uh, the pieces that are here are from before Kevin did not bring uh, his new artwork yet and what we have are the prints that we received this year yes. uh, so this is uh, something that Kevin does for Artbeat this is all donation so whatever yes. sells from the prints that uh, were brought to Artbeat studio all proceeds go to Artbeat studio for me, art has a therapeutic effect similar to that on a, of a sunrise, emotional and intellectual connectedness that promotes improvement in spontaneity, positive identity, and expanded social networks. Kevin hopes to pursue a career in library science or counseling, but he's certain he will always keep art close to his concerns. What about Johnny Peters' bio by Michael Reynolds? Yes, and there's Kevin who also volunteers here a lot, very um, active member of the community. So and, uh, the choice uh, to have Kevin's bio read today is a great way of showing the connectedness uh, he was talking about. And I'm not sure if it's exactly the same as But uh, let's see, this is the book. And we can open the book, the Artbeat Annual, and find How did I miss Kevin? I just saw him. Oh, there. there we go. So here you can see some of the artworks produced during yes. our residency. And they're very different from what we see today. And we can see a lot of different things that Kevin done in the past. But a lot of it is not as visible because uh, usually during the live, Kevin's not here. He volunteers on the other days. Mm -hmm. And he's he always gives back to our big program and uh, purchasing these prints would be really nice yes to actually appreciate that there are magnets uh, these are photographs taken locally mm -hmm. and as you can see there is the golden boy all magnets are photographs taken in winnipeg i believe yes. that this one is winnipeg too yeah. all these are for these sure this is for place, place yeah. obviously right where we are now and you can buy uh, packs of books that are here for $120. It's a set of seven books, and they're assembled differently. So the latest books, which are Inclusion and Impact. Yeah, so now we can get into the art. decorations in the store. 
we are actually, uh, I was not here for a couple of days because I was not I still have a little bit of it here, so I'm, I will try my best not to talk too loud too much. And uh, I actually was doing quite a bit of um, uh, work at home for myself, but it's quite good for other artists that work with that thing. But for me, I was working on rocks that have focus on them and it's present for the Remembrance Day. And we do not have next Friday, I believe. Uh, so uh, the Remembrance Day um, for us, preparation for it is today. Yeah. And it's going to be um, talking about the whole idea for us. So this is something I made at home. Uh, the I put resin on top of varnish, which is something I do not usually do. I usually usually apply resin directly. Mm -hmm. So you can see that little spot is the varnish that stayed um, underneath resin. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make another flower here and then mm -hmm. put resin partially so that spot is not yeah. staying there. So this is what I did overnight. Overnight. Yesterday. Yeah. Resin was curing overnight. Yeah. And uh, this is something I'm going to put in the garden. That's why I put Manitoba Kindness Gardens on Facebook here. Mm -hmm. So you can just refer to the group if you want to. And what we're doing today, we are talking about animals, uh, animals in war, acts of remembrance of animals in war. And uh, certainly we cannot mention everything and there's so much information online that is well, some of it is online, some of it is in the books. I did not, um, I do not think we ever chose this topic here. No. No. Uh, last year we were talking about horses, but this was the painting of Oli's yeah. grandfather. And we painted horses because it was his painting. Yeah, it was a focus on my great grandfather, great -grandfather. who did live through the First World War. and survived the second world war so and i was reading a little bit about animals and war yesterday and i chose this as the best probably the best piece i could find um about that this is the memorial it's in Okay, so the photo credit is Veterans Affairs Canada. It is located in Ottawa. Uh, and I just want to read a little bit about that. Oh, no. The Animals in War dedication honors animals that served alongside their human comrades in war. It is symbolically set next to the South African War Memorial, a, a battle for which Canada supplied 50,000 horses for mounted troops. The footprints of dogs, horses, and mules are stamped into the concrete of the animals and war dedication, representing the marks they left on the battlefield. A bronze, life-size statue of a medical service dog stands guard over the dedication. It is wearing an authentic replica of a medical backpack that war dogs used during the First World War. Canada's military still employs dogs to this day. The Animals and War Dedication was created in 2012 by Canadian artist and sculptor David Clendening. Uh, three bronze plugs, depi plugs depict animals in war and provide interesting facts about their roles, their sacrifices, and their unwavering loyalty. Among these roles, animals have played in war. Mules, carried panniers and artillery, horses, carried mountain troops and hold field guns, carried pigeons delivered messages to specific destinations. Dogs used as messengers, medical assistants, bomb detectors and search and rescue workers. Uh, found on Memorial, for centuries, animals have demonstrated an enduring partnership with humans during times of war. They have served as means of transportation, beasts of burden, messengers, protectors, and mascots. Still today, dogs use their unique, sharply tuned instincts to detect mine clusters and conduct search and rescue operations. 
We remember the contribution and sacrifice of all animals. And there is a piece uh, of the plot that is in French. Uh, the next plot says, horse carried soldiers and pulled down carriages, supply wagons and ambulances. Many paid the ultimate price and their loss was mourned by those they served. Pluck, I know it's pluck, but my pronunciation is not the best. I'm sorry, I'm trying. <laughs> you were also, you were trying to rest your voice and you were getting your dreamy dollars. And I'm trying to think and not to think at the same yeah. time. Honoring war animals and it's the stone pluck. This project was inspired by the Second World War and Korean War veteran Lloyd Swick and supported by artist David Plantining and a group of individuals dedicated to the cause. Uh, there are a lot of different conversations and one of these are remembered, remembering the animal mm -hmm. victims of war, which is the purple poppy was made for. So this cause is uh, about animals that did not have a choice. So yeah. it's said that animals did not have a choice to participate, they did not choose the war. I can tell that about many people that did not choose but had to fight. So this is something that started in UK uh, some years ago, and then it was picked up somehow uh, in Canada as well. But in Canada, we usually talk about uh, remembrance animals in war on Remembrance Day as well, as we do not have a certain, maybe we do have a certain day, but it's not, not well official, known. or maybe yeah. it is official, but it's not well known. Uh, so we uh, got used to talk about people, first of mm -hmm. all, and then we talk about animals that a lot of animals were providing comfort amidst the hardships of war and were uh, mascots and pets to raise moral of the army. So this is spoken about separately because animals were seen as partners rather yeah. than pets yeah. and I would believe that during the war it's a completely different uh, yeah. and also if we think of service animals and like um, people that support like veterans and everything in terms of keeping them safe for their mental health is also another role they play in and beyond you know these war situations yeah. and I know cats uh, were commonly used on uh, some big warships mm -hmm. and for that purpose. So they served, which means they served to uh, reduce or remove rat mm -hmm. infestations that were happening for that time. Now it's not needed as much and cats are not seen the same way, but for them it mm -hmm. was something very important. And this is just a basic silhouette, uh, basic silhouettes of the different animals and some of them are not here. I know that even elephants were said. What animal is before. this? Uh, this is probably <laughs> for all the animals that are not on the picture. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like a uh, And monkeys, monkeys were used as muskets. They were not really fighting. <laughs> I do not think monkeys ever fought. No. Um, yeah, we're more thinking of like a dog like this than so uh, there are not only dogs like this. This yeah. is a shepherd, right? A German shepherd? German shepherd, shepherd. yeah. They're very often used. But shepherd. you can see a lot uh, here. Um, the most uh, participating, let's say, the most used animal uh, during the war was the horse. Yeah. It's great that people took care of many things and invented certain things, and horses do not have to work that hard anymore. Yeah. So now it's uh, sure horses want to roam free and be taken care of and not used for purposes like yeah. that. So yeah, when there is a better choice, people strive for the better choice. And there are mules, there are donkeys, camels, which were used during the First World War for carrying things. Uh, mostly dogs and cats. And there is a pigeon here, and it's a completely different thing that we can also paint today, adapt for peace. Yeah. 
but it's a completely different thing. It's not related to... Yeah, we didn't send doves to war. <laughs> yes, no one did. But pigeons uh, were actually trained to do things and they were delivering important messages and I think they're a good choice too uh, for silhouette. What I have here today, uh, I have this board. This is a canvas board. We got artist tiles of two different sizes. Uh, we have this paper, which is... Can you just card stock? Card stock. And nice paper, I believe. For the touch, I would trust it with markers. And I brought the markers that are... Uh, you already seen these markers. I ordered new set of paints. It's supposed to come today. Mm -hmm. So next time, we'll probably have a fill it okay. if Amazon delivers it. Mm -hmm. So these are all the markers I have that are paint markers also. Mm -hmm. I have something you've seen before. These are the markers that are great too. And I have a white and black postcard right here. So that's what I uh, have today. Uh, we focus on the silhouette, but also sometimes we leave things to our mindlessness. So I thought, should I create a structure for anyone to actually follow yeah. for what you want uh, to express? But I don't want to tell people what to express, you know, because yeah. this is uh, when we talk about memorials, we talk about memory. Everyone has their own thinking. Yeah. So I would just leave it for. Um, everyone who wants to participate and mm -hmm. uh, wants to join to choose their own direction so uh, the choice is again it's paint markers a combination of markers can be used only on light surface they cannot be used on the tiles unless unless i can show uh, how they look like comparably so I will just test a little area and uh, show that a regular marker is not really visible, yeah. but it can give a shade. Yeah. So this is what happens. It kind of fades away. And I would take the yellow and the blue right here. So some paint markers would be really bright. Some of them need more, so you need more than one line to actually create mm -hmm. a nice look on the uh, tile. So this way, I would my preference would be a white Posca, and then on top of white Posca, on any line, you can definitely create a really good. So this is sometimes it's more than one layer of Posca, and you, mm -hmm. you need to shape that too. But this way. It's definitely brighter if it's dry. If it's not dry, it would create something like this. So if we let it dry, so this is not perfect as well. So what would be perfect? Perfect would be a white pen. Mm -hmm. White Posca would be uh, repeating lines, and sometimes it's hard to repeat a line for some artists. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more that depends how artists paint. Some artists love work that is done quickly, but here you can see that if it's not completely dry, it won't do as much. So I do not want to spend all my time waiting for it to dry. Yeah, but you can see it's a lot you more vibrant than just going directly. The difference with this and this. Yeah. So that's a very simple thing. And the ideas are not coming from me today. They're coming from the artist. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you want paper? You want a black towel? Do I think I'll use a black towel. Black towel. Uh, do you want to join? Alright, so I'm choosing, I'm, <laughs> I am choosing the canvas uh, board I brought. Yeah. So I would be just showing the silhouette. And usually, why is a silhouette a choice of mine? I am not painting uh, one animal. When I paint a silhouette, I see it's 
as representing more than one animal. Horses and more, uh, or uh, pigeons. So uh, I'm thinking of a horse, and I think a horse is a good idea. Mm -hmm. And then I could add more. I could add a pigeon on somewhere else, and I could add a dog. So thinking about, should I paint one animal, or should I paint all of them, mm -hmm. whatever I see here. So that could be a good idea to combine. And I would say I can take any color, or I could just take black. And my choice would be the black back, uh, pen big brush. Yeah. Choice of mine. So I would think I want to combine, and I want them to be a little bit different from what I see here. So I would paint a horse silhouette first. topics related to animals, but I'm thinking about animals in war, so it's a little more more somber than usual. But also it's just a matter of like appreciating what they do for people. I mean, we all know of like seeing eye service dogs, but there's a whole, whole wide range of what they do for people, whether it's like in these situations, um, you know, being medical dogs or sniffing out, like, what was it, landmines and all that, versus, yeah, or on a farm, or like they can detect like health problems if someone has like certain medical issues. I don't know the specific names of them, but. Well, there's, there's a, I actually, um, mm -hmm. um, was a few days ago on Facebook, I actually saw uh, an article where someone's like sharing how animals have helped them. And um, there was a lady that was on an airplane or I assume it's a lady that's on an airplane, and she said, well, um, the person beside her had a dog, and it kept alerting every few minutes um, the way that it was trained to alert, mm -hmm. and the lady that owned the dog leaned over to this person and said, you know, I don't want to alarm you or anything, but I would go get your heart checked. And apparently they had an irregular heartbeat. Yeah. And this dog could sense that. And it's like, how do you how do you learn you know, some of these health concerns yeah. that you might have without you know it's And that's just something a person can't do the same exactly. way. You'd have to go through a lot of like tests yeah. and, and use technology versus a dog that somehow like is trained.
is I'm used to work with paint markers in acrylic. Uh, when I draw something like this, I don't like the edge. I usually I'm used to actually fix it with yeah. a paint marker or paint around. Mm -hmm. So I'm not focusing on crisp lines or uh, lines at all. In the beginning, I focus more on the base and mm -hmm. then I'm moving to fixing and uh, working more on the, um, on the silhouette uh, outline. speeding through those so this is a donkey I don't know I somehow I don't want to paint a camel yeah I don't know why <laughs> don't have to it takes it a little too much <laughs> that's, that's just, yeah we'll just go with that <laughs> because of that but for some reason uh, I could put the camel here but should I I don't know <laughs> I never personally connected. Like, I've seen them in the zoo once. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, so like, people look at um, David James at all with the chimps, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Anne Dog, I can't say her name. Mm -hmm. um, she actually did very similar work. Um, um, she, she did very similar work to what. Jane did, but years earlier, mm -hmm. and it was the like essentially what she did was create a platform for um, for recording data regarding animals and the way that they interact and their you know all these different things. Mm -hmm. um, but because it wasn't with a relatable animal, mm -hmm. nobody cared. So what she did was she, she was working with giraffes, and um, there's actually a really cool documentary on that, The Woman Who Loves Giraffes. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's amazing, and it's completely worth, worth uh, oh, um, and oh, uh, we've, we've got somebody over here uh, mentioning guard dogs are also yeah. utilized that way. Um, I don't know, do, do, do you want to be on camera, or do you, you want to be mentioned on camera, or not? No, it's up to you. Okay, well, we, we have a new uh, a new person working with us. She's really awesome. And if you meet her, she, you'll, you'll, <laughs> you can say, yeah, hi. This is Maria. She is. She's amazing so far. She has taken on the daunting task of sorting prints. I wouldn't wish that on anybody, but you are doing amazing work. I don't know how you're making it happen, but you're doing it. Don't, don't stress too much. We, this, is, yeah. this is okay. Don't you worry. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You start to learn artist styles, and I yeah. think that's 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 a fun thing. <laughs> I know. I mean, not the same as being in in like a, a service in war, but I know my dog is so important to me. Like when I'm having bad anxiety, I I didn't even realize how much I went to her until I was away from her, and I was like, oh my god, I can't pet my dog right now. Not to mention the fact that like she's not friendly, but the fact that she's not friendly, like I feel safe because she's protective, <laughs> and. Yeah, no well, one's ever gonna the guard dog yeah exactly. no one's ever gonna come into our house without <laughs> you trying to attack them well my so. puppy has his moments because he's part chihuahua so that yeah. comes out oh, sometimes yeah. and it's like every, and everybody dogs have you know it's it's all nurture versus nature you know and it's all nurture no. except chihuahuas no. <laughs> <laughs> like a Rottweiler or a Pitbull, you can train them to be the sweetest thing in the world. They can be big babies. Um, I mean, of course, you could train them otherwise. We hope you don't, but you could. But Chihuahuas, it's always going to be there. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like my dog has, is a sheep dog, so she has very strong protective instincts. Oh, that's like, yeah. <laughs> it's, I think it's very common with the breed. Absolutely. So. Yeah, some some are just designed to help you or to yeah. to go gather or 
Um, I mean, you see those videos of you know cats where they, um, you know, in other countries where they'll go to a fish market on a daily basis and get fish from the vendor. You know, yeah, it's, it's really cute. <laughs> My camel hid behind the horse, so am oh, I thinking? <laughs> I did, I tried. It's the first time I tried showing a camel. So the only thing I can do is just to separate uh, with white. Or I could leave it because with black you can actually see the outline. Yeah. But I would still go with white outline yeah. for each of them so you would see. Just the, to distinguish a little more. Yeah. So we got the monkey. Okay, so what's left is just the pigeon. And then what I want to do with the background here. Okay. Yeah, I I drew a dog so far, and I wanted to put them next to a person, but I'm having a hard time drawing the person in the Aww. dog. Which one would I draw people? So that's yeah, that's kind of interesting. It's because I have a on black paper, right? It's also because I have a picture in front of me of a dog, oh, yeah. so I can like see what it looks like. <laughs> do, you, do you normally work with white on black that way? No. So that could be another reason that mm. you're you're finding it because the white space versus dark space is kind of backwards. Yeah. <laughs> it is definitely different. So I would need the white paint marker after I'm done with the background. So for right now, I'm going to work on. Um, Coloring. So the colors I will choose, uh, I don't know, should I add someone else? Oh, I guess that's, okay, so this is the basic idea. Yeah. And then anything else would be what I think is good. Do I want to add purple poppies or do I want to add uh, something else? I think purple poppies would give the idea yes. of what it is about, so I think that's the best way and I do not want them to be too um, let's say too visible uh, like this so I would be able to put one copy behind which is possible I can do that mm -hmm. and then put more around I'm sorry, my nose is still not doing great. No need to apologize. <laughs> it's out of your control. So uh, this one is not the best. So I would re <coughs> sorry. <coughs> I would replace the tip for that. <clears throat> so this set has additional marker tips. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. So I would take a new one. And I will keep the old one. It's still usable for some purposes, but not for this purpose. So I will just take this out for now. Just for now. And put the new tip inside. So you see this side, it looks sharp. And it looks like if you put it in, it would be sharp. No, it's not staying sharp. It goes out like a br big bad brush. Also. Yeah. So I use the round side, like mm -hmm. this one. And I, I show how to work the marker in. So this one, it just needs to be shaken quite enough, even if it's new especially if it's new mm -hmm. and when you work it each single time so pressing enough to make it work so 
press, 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 press. Okay, there we go. And this is quite close to purple here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so it's believable. It's <laughs> so I would use a pinky. And the center is it can be black it can be silver i believe you can add gold and silver instead i would say silver mm -hmm. just for the shape of it And yes, we do not have to keep the exact shape of what it is there because the canvas is not square. You just mentioned it's a poppy. Okay, just coloring in. My donkey actually looks like a donkey. Just <laughs> good. Yeah. I feel like it's hard to distinguish between a donkey and a horse. Well, that might just be my um, uneducated. Donkeys are donkeys. Donkeys are donkeys. Donkeys are donkeys. Yeah, yeah. They they do have their differences. Yeah. Well, yeah. I will say I think donkeys are cuter. <laughs> horses that's my opinion that's not an opinion of art people <laughs> yeah. well donkeys have like lovely sweet eyes <laughs> that's what sad makes them sad apart <laughs> um yeah like you said also they're, they're shorter and a little more stout and they do have their differences they kind of have like kind of look but to a you know yeah. like that's sad like you just want to snuggle them up kind of right like donkeys are you know underappreciated little the creatures they're very adorable pigeons are um Underrated, maybe. Pigeons are also underrated. <laughs> Always. <laughs> they can do more than just half hassle. You, what's the word? <laughs> Harass you in the streets. Yeah, yesterday, you know, when you start reading and you start looking for more, you go to places that are not related to Remembrance Day mm -hmm. quite often. So I uh, got to some other websites that are not really 
relevant. So we'll write a lot about chest and lungs. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, there are always discussions. People have the right to disagree with this statement, don't have to follow this. Mm -hmm. uh, different countries do different things. Yeah. You know, I'm just keeping up with the Canadian mm -hmm. website. I think that's the best explanation. Yeah. I think as well is, you know, it's not necessarily that, you know, animals are more important than people it's just the fact that they they do they are able to help people and we are appreciative of what they can do to help and it's without them actually understanding or having much option in what they do as well so that's funny but uh, we are also talking about animals you can tell uh when animal feels that it's not the best treatment. You yeah. would see it. a lot of coloring. <laughs> I'll bring the, I'm going to bring the camera closer to you so we can hear you better. Yeah, there was a, there was a, there was a book called Coco's Kitten, and it was about Coco, like, meeting this kitten, and I guess, like, their adventures, like, how, how caregiving this gorilla was to, towards the kitten, and lately, oh, that's amazing, okay, sorry, I'm seeing, I'm seeing art, and it is wonderful, and it's fantastic, look at this art, isn't that cool? Working on it. Just the, the, the difference between like working on a back, like a black backdrop versus yeah. a white one, it's it's, it's so cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this, you know, Coco was famous. You know, I think there were there's a lot going around on Facebook right now with Coco having met Robin Williams, having met um, Fred. Uh, 
what, what's his name? The, um, why can't I think of his name? The one that uh, did, uh, oh, Fred Rogers. Mr. Rogers. Oh. Yeah. I know his first name. I know. Yeah, that's his first name. It was Fred. But yeah, like, and he met both these people. And these were his favorite, this were, um, or these were Coco's favorite people. And when Robin Williams died, Coco was sad. Yeah. Very sad. And it's, it's just really interesting to see, like, how intelligent animals are when and they they can learn our language but we can't learn theirs it's true you know yeah, they definitely like their brain works differently than mm -hmm. ours that's for sure yeah but that doesn't mean they don't also have experience exactly there's so many they have so much empathy they have so much like knowledge that we don't have they have an instinct that we just can't you know quite grasp right. I know, like with dogs as well, you'll often see those videos of them using like buttons to communicate. Yeah. And to a degree, they absolutely know what they're doing. Yeah. But to an extent, in terms of teaching them abstract concepts, yeah, it's a little more iffy. Well, <laughs> but that doesn't mean yeah. they don't feel them. Right. They just don't necessarily have the same word. Or, like yeah. they, they know like the love button yeah. makes the person happy yes. or like gets them pets or something. Exactly. That doesn't mean they don't feel well. Yeah. Like somebody trained, you know, their their dog to say F you and just like it was like if, if they if they didn't get what they wanted, it's like you know, or like screw you or something. I'm just gonna say it nicer, but um they, they'll teach them anger. Like my yeah. puppy my puppy gets angry sometimes. So I can utilize that and use a word when he's using that emotion, and that's how I've been training him. Um, I'm training him on a bunch of random things, and he starts to learn mm -hmm. words with emotions, he starts to learn words with actions, so he starts to know what they yeah. do mean, so they can think about, they can think Yeah, about they just have to know how different. to attach it. Exactly. Like, it's not the same as. Yeah, it, and it takes a long time, yeah. or it can take. Especially well, like you're, what you're saying too with the emotion is you wait for the emotion and then you yeah. attach it versus <laughs> like trying to yeah. attach it. And like I teach him different words for different stuffed animals that he has so he knows how to pick them up specifically. Um, and like he, like when he does certain things, if he, if he stretches, um, Oh, good stretches, you know, like as he's stretching, and like he'll know, and he'll actually make that motion if I tell him stretch, he'll he'll do it, you know, like not that he needs to stretch on command, but yeah. um, he he can do that, which is pretty cool. Oh, animals are awesome. And then I don't know, there's always like people training parrots to talk. It, like so people use them I know they've used it unfortunately for like drug you know smuggling and stuff so they'll teach them like different words based on like codes for people as they're entering or leaving a location yeah. which is <laughs> not cool but I remember it was this one was kind of funny though but um, the police had to seize one of these parrots and it wouldn't stop swearing at them <laughs> and it's like they couldn't they yeah. couldn't you know, readopt it to anybody, you know, just anybody. It had to be somebody that was okay with for swearing all the time. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's, it's interesting. It's definitely. And then some, some animals just know that they're, pe they're pestering you. Like they, they they do know when they're being frustrating. <laughs> yeah, they all have their own personalities. They're just like little people. Yeah, or big people if it's a big animal. And well, the thing is, you can you can often tell if they're just playing too, yeah. right? There's there's like if, if if my puppy bites me, you know, sometimes yeah. there's often a, like a play bite. Yeah, my dog. Like I said, she's not friendly, so she will <laughs> bite. But yeah. when. When she's just playing, she doesn't actually put any force into it. Exactly, it's like a love hit. Yeah. It's the way that they play with their siblings. Or she she'll accidentally like 
she'll try to grab my sleeve so it doesn't hurt me, and then she'll accidentally pinch me, and it's worse. <laughs> but she tries. I'm still coloring. You're looking good. Oh, it's 1.56 already. Oh, I need to hurry up. Yeah. Do you want to stop it there for the time being and then we'll post the results later now that we've talked a little bit about what it means and what we're doing. And right now we're kind of mainly just coloring the back. So, uh, some of the silhouettes need to be fixed still because mm -hmm. they went around them. But this is the basic idea. Mm -hmm. I would put something around and I'm not sure if I want to add words. I can. Yeah. I can just write never forget or remember the animal victims of yeah. war. Or I can just do that without words so you'll see the result. So we won't see anyone next week but After so that. we're going to take some time to remember more. And then the week after that, we'll be back. So we'll see everyone. Thank you for watching.